Hey viewers, welcome to another game of Schedule Pro Gamer. Today we're doing TCM versus MYM, which I don't know which teams they are, but you can see them in the bottom left and right. And um, yeah, that's all I know about them. So this is the LCS 2013 EU Spring WSIG D1 event from Lille in France. So um, yeah, <laughs> that's all. Big name for a tournament, why can't they just name it, name it something like DreamHack? <laughs> like something that I can actually read. But hey, whatever, it uh, probably has something to do with the sponsoring and such. Anyhow, we are getting an invade here from the blue team. The red team, however, is all the way in the top and they want to invade the blue team now. But the blue team retreating. They realize there's nobody there, they place the ward and they are going to go to the mid lane, although two of them split off to go for the blue buff. Oh, everyone's recalling. So the red team also realizing, well, we're not going to be that aggressive because they're not actually sure they can win it. At least I'm pretty sure that's the reason. Because there would really not be any other reason to do so. Uh, anyhow, we have three guys at the blue buff for the blue team. We have only one guy coming in. Well, it's probably two guys at the blue buff, maybe even three. But they're all grouped up, so I can't see. So no, that's a maximum of two at the blue buff. And they're going to invade this blue buff. Ari taking up positions all the way in the back. And here they come. Maokai in the front and Rumble and Ari behind him. But yeah, Rumble, of course, shouldn't have too much problem, uh, problem staying alive. It is um, the Ari who might actually be caught in. She actually does get caught. Quite heavy damage on her, but they do pick up the blue buff. So uh, that means, well, win for them. Although it might actually result in a champion kill. I don't know who got the blue buff. I think that was Maokai. So he must have used his smite on that. Uh, yeah, he did. And ended up with, uh, with that. Um, yeah, Lux missing her snare there. Which was kind of a waste because she could have done so much damage being level 3 when... Um, no, level 2, sorry. When uh, uh, there was a level 1 uh, Ari there. And yeah, a little bit of damage going off on Maokai. And they're going to steal his red buff because screw you. If you steal my blue buff, I'll steal your red buff. And without a red buff, yeah, Maokai is going to have some trouble, uh, well, sticking to people. Because obviously that slow really helps him uh, to keep do damage. Uh, of course he has plenty of CC so uh, he should still do pretty well in ganks. He just had one on one. He's not that good anymore. But yeah, red buff is of course a very important buff to have. Uh, I think blue buff is more important early game. So the red team still comes out ahead in that. But yeah, the, the red buff is still pretty amazing in the early game. It's just... That, well, in the early game you don't really need that much from uh, from the red buff. The slow is nice, but the slow in the late game is so good. Because then when you actually do damage, obviously it becomes even better. And we are going to pause for a second here. Yeah, that was just a random political party trying to get my attention. Well, they're not going to get it. But anyway, we have a gang coming in here, obviously, but it turns kind of sideways. When one of the kills go to the enemy team, double kill for the, for the blue team here. And might actually pick up a third one. Yes, nicely done. That is a 3 for 2. Even though, well, the blue team, uh, sorry, the red team was the one engaging in that. And it turned really sideways. Yeah, I'm sorry, we missed the opening, like, engage there from, I think that was Maokai. But, yeah, that was because of the pause. I'm sorry about that, but... Yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, <laughs> we are now in mid lane and um, mid lane should be a pretty interesting lane because both of these guys have very bursty damage. And that means that if one of them gets caught, both of them have a snare as well. A snare and a taunt, I guess. Or whatever that's called uh, from Ari. But yeah, well, anyhow, you get the point. So both of them can... Uh, Make the other stand still and then uh, do their damage. And well, yeah, that is going to be very, very quick damage, uh, quick kills. And I wonder if we get to see any of those. 
because well as I said they they are going to be very fast and it's uh, it's very hard to keep track of that in the mid lane but hey we have spotters on the floor because this is a tournament so there is a like three minute delay between uh, or maybe even I don't know maybe less probably less and I think this is the same gank that we saw earlier no it is not <laughs> oh man it's executed exactly in the same way but this time they are going to grab the kill and probably still lose someone but it hasn't decided yet who is going to die but all three of them can still die and it is going to be Maokai who dies so Maokai for Sona trade and yeah they ran out, even though if they had fought that, they would have still lost one, but they would have picked up at least one kill back. And instead of fighting, they ran away and took so much damage from everything. So yeah, that's um, that's kind of a shame. But yeah, well, it is now 4-3. The blue team, of course, uh, coming out ahead with that one kill because of that team fight earlier. And yeah, here we go. Oh, so much damage. Oh, but it is on both teams. So yeah, the Caitlyn doing a good job of just, uh, well, saving her thrash there. And it is, of course, the Sona who is, uh, who is back now. And Sona is going to protect the Varus from any further harm, hopefully. But he will have to have some more mana to actually do something here uh, against these ganks. Because, well, he does have a slow at least, so that's that's helpful for preventing those ganks. But it's definitely not um, going to prevent everything if he has only a sliver of, uh, of mana. And nope, that's, that's about it. Did nothing coming out here. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, these are two very tanky champions. It's going to be very hard to do anything against them. And of course you need the assistance of your jungler. But the uh, the jungler seem to be uh, mainly in bottom lane, although Maokai is in top lane currently and might actually sneak into this fight. Oh, the nice uh, slice and dice there. And he actually gets pretty far away from them. And it takes the, uh, the rumble ultimate, plus his shield, plus movement speed boost to actually catch up and <laughs> that, of course, is exactly the way... Uh, uh, oh, come on. <laughs> Renekton would want it. I wanted to say so bad, but that's the wrong game. Wrong crocodile there. Anyhow. We have... Um, yeah, the, the other jungler here, Xin Zhao, is uh, standing in the, in the back here. Trying to get into this fight as well. But, yeah, he does realize that... He got spotted there and there's nothing he could do. So anyhow, the uh, red team pinged him as you might have seen on the minimap. And because of that, they know where he is. They also know that the bottom lane is therefore not going to get ganked in a few next uh, few seconds. So the bottom lane can actually engage in this fight and that's exactly what they're doing. They know that if the jungler is top, then uh, yeah, well, there's no help coming in for these laners. And nice amount of damage there done by uh, by Caitlyn. But Xin Zhao just immediately running to that bottom lane from that top lane and getting a kill out of it. That is insane. Ari, however, is also bottom lane. I did not see her, but well, they do get a two for one trade out of that. So I guess their push and their aggression was still worth it. And they got both of the bottom laners, meaning that um, this Caitlyn is now going to farm up a little bit more than the Varus. And, well, that's going to equal that out again. Uh, Lux, still in mid lane, is going to outfarm the Ari for a little bit. About 10 minions up. And for the rest, the top lane is uh, currently going to Renekton. But it's still pretty close together. There's only uh, like 10 minions between them. So... It's not a big deal in any of the lanes yet. Uh, the kills are also equal and the gold is therefore also pretty much equal. So the only difference there is the little bit of extra gold you get from uh, from First Blood versus like a few more minions on one of the two sides. But yeah, that's uh, it's not going to be uh, enough to well say anything about the outcome of this game because obviously with this... Uh, well, with this score, uh, this gold score especially, there it's not going to matter. 
so many pink wards going down by the way so so many and yeah they do have a ward in this bush in this bottom bush so if Maokai runs in here they can actually see him and now they know there is a ward in that bush so they definitely know there's not a ward in that top bush but not in the bottom they know there's a ward in that bottom bush because Sona actually hits him and that could never happen otherwise so yeah he's going to uh, just keep just standing in there even though they have a ward in, the, in there as well so there's really no reason for him to be there and what's he doing with that lantern I don't know <laughs> did he think that Markai was still there or what because that would have been an awesome trick we saw that trick of course in a previous game as well and oh a nice kill there no oh she missed it oh nice the Zinzao turning back just in time to avoid that uh, that taunt that charm and oh yeah they're just going to be safe so the Sona ultimate goes down but it doesn't result in anything not even damage because that was missed entirely and yeah we're going to go on this top lane now and Renekton oh he's still pretty safe he is uh, yeah he's building pretty much just well standard uh, damage items well with his two Doran's blades but he does have a little bit of magic resist just for the funds of it and of course the Oh, damage! Can Soda pick it up? No! Soda pick up the kill, dude! Oh, no, 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 no! She's not. She's going to let it go. She should have ran into that, uh, that Caitlyn straight up, hoping that she would get a Q up in time to get that kill. But yeah, she backed off. She was too afraid of Thresh, and uh, Thresh could have, well, uh, pulled her back. But still. The aggression should have gone there and yeah, well, I guess she would have never landed that kill, but well, should have at least attempted. Well, the blue turret goes down in bottom lane and that puts, uh, well, that and the three kills ahead, puts the blue team, uh, the, sorry, red team ahead by quite a, uh, quite a lot. And indeed the Lux got killed and that must have been very bursty because there was no way we could have caught that on camera. Unless we did see it on camera and I just completely missed it. But, well, it's just very hard to, to catch that on camera because, well, they're always relatively close. Oh, we did see that. Never mind. We did see that. We saw the, the end of that. The end of the kill. And then almost the kill on Xin Zhao. Yeah, it just took forever to, uh, to get her back up. I kind of assumed she would have been back up, but then... Yeah, well, no, she is 0-2, so actually two kills on her. I don't know. Maybe we saw it, maybe we didn't. Maybe I'm confusing two kills. I don't know. But yeah, it is uh, it is hard to catch that as a commentator because, well, burst damage is always very hard to catch on uh, on camera because you're kind of dependent on the minimap. And if, um, if the minimap shows you that two champions are close, that normally means they're going to engage. And in the mid lane, once they get close, the kill is already done. That's how it goes. And that's why bursty champions are so hard. Top lane, however, is much easier. You, yeah, you can just wait for things to happen. And even, you can even wait for the uh, portraits on the side to start blinking. And once they start blinking, you can mosey over there and see what's happening. But really, for the rest, it doesn't matter too much what you do. <laughs> Anyhow, in this mid lane we have the Ari just reigning supreme now. Although in the uh, minions she's not really ahead, but she is quite far ahead in the kills, four kills ahead, and equal minions still. Uh, Varys is pulling ahead in the minions as well, and the same goes for Renekton. Although Renekton is only like ten minions up, so it's not a big deal. The tower goes down in bottom lane, and that means that. Um, well, we're kind of equal in towers again, which means that we're, uh, well, only three kills behind, which is about a thousand gold normally. And that is exactly the amount of gold we're behind. Well, it can be up to 1500 gold, I guess. And there goes another ward. 
And with that ward taken out, it is... Um, uh, yeah, there's only vision for the red team on that whole side of the map. As you can see, they have a pink ward in that tri-bush. They have a pink ward at the dragon and they have a normal ward, uh, well, at the exit of the jungle there. Nicely done. Unfortunately, there is a teleport coming in. They do get the kill, but the teleport actually saved that minion and saved the, the Maokai for quite a long time. And they're not going to pick up this kill, but then... Hello, bye-bye. <laughs> oh man, gotta love that. So um, five kills now on Ari, five kills and one assist versus zero kills, zero assists on Lux. So Lux really needs to uh, get a little bit more in, in the fights. And of course she can't really help that, but yeah, she has been in mid lane all the time and uh, kind of didn't follow around the, the Ari that much. And with Ari just uh, having free reign, it kind of uh, wrecked havoc on the bottom lane. Although they are four and two versus three and four. So it's four kills versus three kills. That's so still pretty much the same. Both of them have four assists and both of the um, supports have one kill. So there's only one kill between them. And with the minions still being equal, yeah, that is uh, pretty impressive for the amount of harassment they have been taking, or not so much harassment, but rather uh, the the amount of assists they got, for assistance they got from that mid laner. Because Ari has been all over the place. It is really, uh, yeah, it's crazy sauce how many times she has been in bottom lane and holy crap, everyone's so low. Yeah, Ari is going to take out one may actually be able to take out more no she does not have anything up so not a flash not an ultimate and they are going to take the dragon now i'm assuming oh 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 i don't know what she was doing there and the camera didn't really show what she saw but she, yeah okay there's that pink ward that pink ward actually gave her the vision she uh, she wanted and she actually took out one guy i think but yeah, getting that uh, that kill on uh, on Ari is actually pretty big because she was uh, at a huge killing spree. And holy crap, look at this. The damage goes down on both teams, but yeah, it's four versus two. What do you expect out of this? And it is still four versus two. And unfortunately, yeah, they are not going to be able to hold this. And this, this is starting to become a little bit uh, too dangerous. But yeah, the red team picks up the, the dragon. It definitely was too dangerous. The red team picks up the dragon and gets a free kill with it. <sighs> so it's the LCS promotion qualifier. Okay. That's what it is. That's why I've never heard of these teams because they are in a qualifier tournament. But so far we've, uh, well, th this last fight was pretty silly. I mean, the, the blue team shouldn't even have been there they uh they attempted their their attack then they went way too low and one of them got killed by ari and then they should have backed off completely off but instead they got a one for one trade for ari which was still acceptable i guess uh and then after that the rest was just silly i mean losing two more kills for no reason at all there's no way you're going to get a two versus four or later on a one versus four to work for you even if you're fed and they weren't so and even with dragon i mean if so if everyone was low that would have been a different story but oh nicely done would have been great if the lux picked up that kill but well the kill is a kill and um sona gets it in this case so yeah, three kills for the blue team there, three for one. And that means that uh, only Varus is out. They're going to take another tower. The Renekton is starting to look pretty beefy. Um, yeah, if we look at his items, then we see that uh, he has some pretty nice uh, extra uh, tankiness. So extra magic resist, extra health, and also some nice extra damage, which uh, makes me guess that he's going to do uh, fine in that uh, well in the rest of the game 
Obviously, he has been doing pretty well. He just hasn't landed any kills yet. Which is unfortunate, but not uh, uncommon. It's the Ari, however, that they need to watch out for. The Ari on... Uh, well, Ari and Caitlyn are both at 7 and 6 kills. Just insane amounts of gold, especially with the 8 assists uh, from, <laughs> from Caitlyn. That adds quite a lot of gold, assuming that you didn't have uh, like 4 guys assisted on the kills. Because then you get only a little bit of gold from it. But if you have one or two guys assisting on a kill, obviously the, the gold is still pretty significant. But yeah, we really, on the uh, blue side, we really don't see anyone with that amount of, uh, yeah, of, of gold like these two guys have. But yeah, it would be nice to actually see the amounts of gold on individual players. But yeah, that would require them to actually, well, click the little gold bag that's there. But yeah, well, we'll have to see if they do that at some point. Because I would like to see uh, how far behind our carries are. Well, not our. The blue carries are compared to the red ones. I think commenting for so long on just the blue team. Because before spectator mode, there was only the blue team for you. The red team was always the enemy, no matter which side of the map they were on. And obviously that is kind of strange now. <laughs> well, even though I have been doing uh, spectator replays for like six months, maybe even longer, probably longer. It still confuses me every now and then. I still tend to call the blue team my team and uh, the red team the enemy team. Even though that's not the case at all. I mean, these are two teams that, yeah, I don't care about either of them. I just care about seeing them do make great plays and not make too many mistakes. But obviously, well, we're doing that. So, especially the red team, they have made less mistakes than the blue team. And um, yeah, there's that. I mean... Blue team definitely uh, made some mistakes and the red team just, well, took the profits from that. They uh, took advantage of the fact that uh, the blue team overextended a couple of times. And yeah, especially that dragon fight, that was just silly. They gave away the game right there. But now they're actually, well, they actually made a little bit of a comeback with the three versus one. Where they traded Varus for uh, Rumble, Ari and Thrash. But yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you just have to uh, suck at first and then um, come back afterwards. Because, well, you're going to man up afterwards and actually play better. But it doesn't seem to be the case here. A full ace. Yeah, that was, that was just insane. That was a great fight for, well, the red team. They uh, they only lost one. They only lost Ari, and Ari is going to uh, teleport back in once she uh, she has her well twenty seconds of uh, downtime, and they're going to push all the way up to the inhibitor. Maybe even take the inhibitor, um, or they're going to boost out. Yeah, that's cool too. I don't know why they they boost out. They had several seconds left before anyone important came up because, well, Xin Zhao is not going to do it. And yeah, Sona is also not going to do it. So yeah, they had several seconds left. Could have taken down that tower quite easily, actually. But well, we'll see that. I guess they wanted to prevent this, uh, this Baron from happening, but they're not going for Baron. Hmm, because I would imagine and look at the position of the pink ward once again. I see it so many times done wrong. But yeah, the position is right there in the entrance. That way, there's no way you can uh, hide a ward in the back of the, the dragon cave or whatever that is. Cove. And yeah, that way you can just... Uh, safely do dragon without uh, having vision and there's how you ward the dragon normally and yeah you wouldn't see that if you place your ward your pink ward out too far to the back or well too far towards the river and wow that rumble ultimate really hit no one 
But Jin Zhao jumping in it anyway and oh he took quite a bit of damage there but he is still alive and he still has uh, well the ability to kill people here but yeah they're all going to just get out and oh Lux goes down yeah that did not go well they all backed off so they first engaged on a rumble ultimate and then they all had to back off because, well, they took too much damage. Yeah, I really don't know what this blue team was doing. But anyway, now they're too far behind. Now there's no way to come back. So this is going to be this game. Um, yeah, it's not finished yet, obviously. it's uh, There are too many people up. But they're going to, well, just gradually get more and more fed. And um, get the... the gold lead get the items lead and then push in afterwards they're really not having any troubles here anymore so yeah we have another engage here and yeah they easily easily pick up that kill there's really nothing left to do but just to well kind of give it up <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to see if they can make a comeback because it may still be possible if they in, in tournaments virtually everything is possible it's just that they normally don't pull it off but it is still possible to win team fights if you actually communicate well and if you actually have a strategy or if the enemies just are playing stupid so if they just uh, make mistakes But yeah, they, uh, you need to catch someone like Ari off guard if you can kill her or if you can kill the Caitlyn. One of the two would result in uh, yeah, in, in you being able to, to still team fight. Because that is the problem at this point. Of course, if you, if you can't team fight anymore, like they currently are, well, yeah, currently they are losing every team fight. Every time they, uh, five versus five, they lose completely. So if you can't team fight anymore, then what you need to do... Oh, he actually picked up that ward. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> but what you need to do is you need to make sure that you pick off one guy and kind of get the vision on the map. And uh, yeah, that's why they're trying to deny that vision as much as possible because they don't want they don't want the blue team to have the opportunity to gank one of them while doing blue or whatever. And oh, Renekton, so much damage. Oh yeah, this is exactly the opposite of what was supposed to happen. And Ari is still in the middle of nowhere, but she's just going to back off, I'm assuming. Or is she? She's going to help with this Baron? Wow. She's still in here, but yeah, she used her ultimate there to get out. She is still in a dangerous position, but is going to live. They're going to get all the kills. Complete ace. Yeah, because it was the, the, the opposite of what, what they needed to happen. They got caught. They had one guy getting caught, and instead of backing off, they did exactly the same thing. They let Ari just poke them and poke them and poke them. And then one of them got caught. Ari uh, got caught well as well. But yeah, she still had the opportunity to get out of there. Because they couldn't finish her off. And even if she died there, it wouldn't have mattered. It would have been an ace for one. They just took way too much damage for no reason. And instead of uh, just giving up that Baron and just go do something else, they uh, they defended it anyway, uh, or they tried to defend it with a zero ch chance of success. And yeah, sometimes you need to give up those things and take something of your own. Obviously, there are plenty of, uh, of targets still available. You can still push the bottom lane, for example. You can still get a, a tower kill there. Obviously, the dragon was already done, so that's not on the table. But I think this team is just, yeah, they're, they're just down on their, well, mental state. They don't know how to win anymore. I mean, that's what we see the great teams do. The great teams, they not they don't just never give up. 
because that is a mistake that many of the uh, well the new players make I now well the lower ELO players the not 2000 ELO players they, they think that the trick to winning is to never give up but that's not the case if you lost you lost but the thing is this team lost by the way they, they might as well surrender if you're 14k behind you're not going to win but the thing is what we see the, the pro teams do every now and then in tournaments, well, every time in tournaments, is to catch up in gold with other objectives. And, well, that's why they don't give up. They know that if they have enough gold, it doesn't have to be the same amount of gold. If they have enough gold, they can still win. And that's exactly what, what you normally see them do. And that's exactly what you don't see this team do. This team is still playing the game as if they're equal on gold and that is just not the case you can't defend five versus five at the tower because that is not going to work if you're so far behind and yeah you can see here that results in four kills almost five kills and you're still losing the tower and the inhibitor there's nothing you can do at this point unless you know what you're doing in this team not so much I'm sorry, it just annoys me and I'm sure that the official commentators for this event are way more enthusiast uh, enthusiastic about the plays this team makes. But this game was over so long ago that really there was nothing left to do but just to win. And well, as I said, it went wrong at the moment they lost that dragon fight and just threw in two kills any anyway. So. They gave away two extra kills and from there on out they never had the upper hand. They were just mentally down and yeah, well, anyway. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. GG!